All right, in the last video, we discussed all the different types of symmetry. Now I'm going to move on to the adjustment tools within the voxel sculpt room. So the adjustment tools are for making very broad changes to your model. They're not really for sculpting per se, but they are used a lot to create basic forms or to make significant changes. So the most important ones, to start off with would be the cutoff tool and this really takes advantage of using voxels as opposed to just uh, polygonal meshes because it allows you to cut away certain parts of your model based on what direction you're looking. Now with this one you'll notice that with the stroke modes most of them are grayed out you only have access to these shape modes so I'm using the polygon mode and as you see if I click and I start some just draw a little shape and I close that shape that will be cut away from the model so I could pick a circular one and I can drill a hole all the way through the model now one problem with this is that if I draw get real close to do this if I draw a circle like that then you'll notice that one side, one side of the hole is much wider than the other. And this is because the cutoff tool is based off of perspective. Hmm. To stop this from happening, you may want to be using the cutoff tool with an orthographic view. Now an orthographic view just means that objects will not change their apparent size uh, depending on how far away they are. To go into orthographic mode with 3D code, you can hit the 5 key on your numpad. Now to line it up to a certain axis, you can use other numbers on your numpad, like 4 will go to the side, 7 will go to the top, 1 will go to the bottom, 2 will go to the front. So now if I draw that circle, then you'll see it's the same size on both sides of my sphere. You can also, and these will work with any of these shape modes, so I can go in with my closed spline. I can make some of those edges really sharp. And you'll see I cut that shape out of my model. Now the next important one, next most important one would be pose, but I'm going to hold off on that for just a bit. I'm going to talk about that one last. The next most useful one would be move. And this basically acts as a grab tool if you've ever used Mudbox or ZBrush. And it just allows you to move different parts of your model. Now this is dependent on what alpha you've chosen. Most of the time you're going to want to use this very first alpha, one that sort of rounds off at the edges so that you can make this brush very big and just move large parts of your model. So if you're just starting out, I will very often start out with a sphere and if I just enable X symmetry for example, then I can very quickly start to create a form here. So move is very useful for starting out a, a new model, especially if you're doing more organic modeling. Now I said it was dependent on alphas, and it is. If I picked an alpha like this rocky one, then you'll see I only move what was selected by that alpha. Now this could be an effect that you're looking for, but my recommendation would be to stay away. Now you can also hide voxels, and what this does is that it will remove voxels from your object and remap the resulting polygons to respect the fact that they've been removed, but they're still there. So if I hide them, if I hold down control, it will bring them back. 
But you see, I can't add anything to my model using this. I can only take away and bring back. Now there is one note I'm going to make here, and that is cell is used to hide just the surface of your model. However, in my experience with the current build of ZBrush 4.5.19, this has caused, I mean, 3D Coat, this has caused 3D Coat to crash more often than any other tool, so stay away from this until there is an announcement or a patch or a bug fix regarding that particular tool. I only say that because Vox Hide and Cell are right next to each other, just want to make sure you're using the right one. Now another very useful tool here is Transform, and this is one that I use so often that I set the uh, hotkey to Control T, which is the exact same as in Photoshop. And this allows you to move, rotate, and scale your objects. And I'm going to turn off symmetry. So as you see, it's a pretty standard gizmo. You can scale in one axis, you could scale globally, or you can move in any of the axes. So this is a very useful one. You'll be using it quite often. That didn't really do anything because it's a sphere. But you can also move your gizmo without moving the object. So if I wanted to change the pivot point of my object, I can select move only gizmo and I can move the pivot point. I can even rotate the pivot point. Then turn that off and now I am just rotating the object again. And then I can also recenter it and reset the axis. So if I've rotated it a bunch, again I'm going to make this not a sphere anymore, just so this is a little bit more obvious. Okay. So now I can rotate it a bunch, and then if I hit reset axis, that will just move the gizmo back to its default position without moving the object. All right, another important one is going to be instancer. And what this allows you to do is to create instances of your object. Now what an instance is as opposed to a clone is that an instance uh, is a clone of the object but any changes made to the original will also be reflected in the instance. So if I hit new instance then you'll see I get a new object here. If I move it out of the way I can sculpt on the original and you'll see it shows up on the instance. Now the reason you do this is that this allows you to save memory. Because both of these objects actually reference the exact same uh, space and memory, this means using instances is actually quite efficient. So if you're working with a lot of objects that are all copies of each other, it would be wise to use instances. Using an instance also allows you to make a mirrored instance. So this is very useful if you're working if you're working on separate objects that are supposed to be mirrors of each other. All right, now back to pose. This is the probably the most versatile of a lot of these tools. But it also requires the most explanation. So the easiest way to think of Pose is to think of it as a soft selection tool. Here's the way it works. It'll default to a transpose mode called Line. And in order for this to make a little bit more sense, I'm going to create a new object. This one's going to be a tall cylinder. Make it a little wider. Okay, so here's how this works. If I click and drag with the pose tool, I'll draw this little line. Now what that line is dictating is the start of it is the least selected and the end of it is the most selected. So as you see, at the very end of that line it's all red, meaning totally selected, and at the very bottom where I started it's the original color, which means it hasn't been selected. Now that that's been selected, 
I can rotate it and you see I can pose this now hence the name pose tool but there's a lot to this tool so I undo that and clear my selection if I make that drawing area very very long then you'll see I get more of a bend whereas if I make that drawing area very very narrow then I get more of a harsh angle when I use this tool. If I hit enter then you see the mesh is reskinned to fill in that gap there. There's more to this. I can pick from line or I could pick something called ring and what this does is that when I draw only the area in the middle of the line will be selected. So I can use this to say taper down that one area. Or I could use a sphere. And what that does is I'll just select a circular region where I drew. And you see I can just move that one area. Now if you wanted to change the fall off of this, let me go back to the line here, you can edit that pose fall off and it's edited by a curve. Now if you remember the splines from a few videos ago, these work in exactly the same ways. If I click here and add a new point, I can right click on it and it'll change the interpolation mode. So I can say add in a very, very harsh curve right there and let's see, let's see what that does. If I scale that up you'll see that harsh corner right there which is a direct result of this profile curve. And if you hover over one of these points and hit the delete key you'll remove it. So one thing I could do is I could completely bring it back down to zero. And if I draw the other way And then you'll see we get a very interesting effect. And this is actually very powerful if you use it in combination with, say, ring. And you'll see I have two peaks here. If I hit OK and draw a ring, then you will see that I have two areas that are selected now. So the pose tool is very powerful. You can also paint your own selections if you wanted to. I find this to be a little imprecise, but it is an option that is available. So those are the major pose tools. They're very useful for making broad adjustments to your model. And in the next video, we're going to talk about